Give me some more volume there. Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys ready? Man, we have been looking forward to this weekend. I'm telling you. We have been looking forward to this weekend. I am just excited because the next couple of days is going to be Holy Ghost filling. Amen. Revelation spilling. Amen. Anointing chilling. It's going to be good. We can write a song right now. We're ready to go. Now, me and Jason done wrote a song this morning. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes, Called I'm an Outlaw. We, we done wrote a song this morning. It was good. <laughs> Sitting in the parking lot. Amen. Just want to kind of give you, a, uh, for, for everybody here and, and anybody coming in from out of town, give you kind of an overview of what's going to happen. Um, Prophet Kevin has been, of course, really preparing for this and, and really pressing into God. So tonight, what we're going to do, it's going to be a little different. Go figure. Um, <laughs> and so what we're going to do, we're going to open up with a couple songs. And then uh, Prophet Kevin's going to come and he's going to teach on prophetic worship. And then we're going to turn it loose. All right? Amen. Come on. And uh, so we're going to capitalize on, uh, on your zeal and the wonderful anointed team we got. We're going to have a good time in the Lord. Amen. So also, just a quick, we, Dennis had made an announcement last night. It was uh, miscommunication. But the grill, the food grill, will be open after services in the evening, not before. Because we gotta, we can't kill our team back here, right? So, after service there'll be food available, but before services, uh, tomorrow night, Sunday night again, it'll be after. We'll have food, not before. Amen. And there will be breakfast available Saturday morning and Sunday morning if you get here early. But you got to get here early. Turn around, punch somebody, say, "Get here early." If you want your bacon, <laughs> you got to get here early. Amen. The early saint catches the pork. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, let's pray and let's dedicate this weekend to the power of God, to the blessing of the saints. Amen. Father, we just thank you today. We thank you for what you're going to do in our hearts this weekend. We separate ourselves. Can you give me some monitor here, Bob? I can't hear nothing. Um, we separate ourselves to you. We separate ourselves from the affairs and the craziness of this world. We separate ourselves from the foolishness of all the politics. We separate ourselves from carnal living and carnal ways. We separate ourselves from distractions. And we set ourselves to seek the Lord. We set ourselves to seek the Lord. Laying flesh aside. Lord, in you we hide. We set ourselves to seek the Lord. Amen. You ready? Are you ready? Well, let's go. Down. 
feeling I'm not bone you about to move. That you would pour your spirit out. You said that you would fall on sons and daughters. Here we are, God.
for two days God has been speaking to me about tonight and he says I'm going to come in your worship I'm going to come in your worship but you got to have your heart prepared because God's going to overpower you how many want to be overpowered and so what we're going to do we're going to sing this song one more time that I'm going to come and teach and then we're going to demonstrate in the worship what you learn I want you to raise your hand say Holy Spirit now, hold on a second how many would say that the year 2020 was a rough year how many lost things in 2020 God is saying, I'm here to be your reward, your recompense. I'm here to be your recompense. You know, I was in Brazil last month and I had little children that got so touched by the Holy Spirit. They, they, they were running on stage by the hundreds. I want to see that in America. I want to see your children so touched by God that they glow when they go back to their moms and their dads. Now listen to me. You have Holy Ghost emotions and most Americans, what they do is they lock their emotions up when they come to church. But today I specifically got a message to open up your emotions. Because if you don't open up your emotions, you cannot be touched the way God designed you to be touched. Come on, I want you to raise your hands. <laughs> I want you to use your big voice. Not that volume makes God hear you more, but he can see the, the heart cry. He can see the heart cry. Just say these words, come here, Jason. Come here, bud. I need to usher behind him. I wouldn't presume to say that Jason Lee's gonna get something new. But God, but God can say it. God can say it. And I'm telling you, the new is in this room, buddy. I've been in the hundreds of hours of meetings with you. I've never seen you act like this. Never. I've never seen you just, I've never seen this. Father, do something new. Recover the years recover the years that cancer took from him.
represent the next generation. You got to go from generation to generation to generation. Sing the same part. I see it on you. I, wow! Come and blow on and through. between your voice and your heart makes up the difference. I look upon the heart, said the Lord, and I'm going to put new wind on you. Come on, do it to him again. Come on, come on. Come on, sing it again. Come on, come on. She sings this song. The wind is going to come upon you. Go ahead, Nicole. Come and blow on through. Spirit blue. Yes! We're ready Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come and do. Come on!
you, uh, Columbus worship team, Zanesville worship, Jackson, come on up here if you're in here. Come on up here. Get yourself a refreshing. From generation to generation. Watch, watch her face. Watch what happens to her face when she begins to sing. God's gonna make you a worshiper, honey. Tonight your life is gonna get visited by the God of worship. Go ahead. So come and blow on through me. Spirit move. We're ready for you to come and blow. Decades worship. They keep doing the same kind of thing. And it's not that you're sick of it, but you know there's something coming this new. And as she sings this, it's Zany, right? Use her name when you sing. You're gonna feel the wind crack over you. And drummer, you beat the drums. We have to break some drums tonight. We're gonna break through, brother. Come on. All right, go ahead. Come on, come on. So come on down. something else and God said I'm looking for you I want the heart of the worshiper not the voice of a diva I said I want the voice of a worshiper not the heart of a diva and as she begins to sing over you something gonna break make up your mind tonight you're gonna unpack your gift for the body of Christ quit hiding your gift there are people that are wired for your gift more than your sister's gift. Go ahead. So come and blow on through. Spirit move. We're ready for you to come and blow.
from generation to generation to generation. Seeing it is not the only thing you're going to do in your life. There's a pastoring thing that's going to be inside of you. Teaching and pastoring God's people. So don't worry about the singing part. I'm going to use it as support. David was a great worshiper, but it was calling to be a king. So as she begins to sing, we're going to ride this worship gift as long as we can until your husband comes along and you and him start pastoring. face of Jesus because that's how your husband is going to recognize you when he sees the glory of God on you he says, that's the one I saw in the vision that's the girl I saw in the vision because God's been dealing with your future husband for a long time how many feel something is breaking in this room right now Okay, her name is Sam. Stand up, Sam. Go ahead. Come and blow on through. Spirit move. We're ready for you to come and blow. chosen you see yourself as the least daughter stop thinking that way I'm gonna make you a mother a spiritual mother in the house of God and worship is the pathway to motherhood for you as you worship me I'm gonna reveal the heart of a mother the work of a mother of a spiritual mother go ahead Come and Spirit move, we're ready for you to come and blow.
the prophetic word I gave her. Just put another gender on it. You're going to be a father in my house, son. You're a pastoral father. And as you worship, I'm going to show you how to be that father. And as you stand before the people and lead them in worship, you're going to see the broken, the lonely, the disconnected sheep. For you, behind the stage, behind the guitar, the pastor's eyes are watching my flock. God, let the Father, is coming on you right now, son. Go ahead. So come and bless on you under the shadows, son. You have a dominant voice to sing, but you're afraid to use it. In the car, you sing it. In your shower, you sing it. In your bedroom, you sing it. Quit stealing from my people, son. You're stealing the gift I gave you. Now begin to scream, Lord, let the body of Christ hear my voice. 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 No more hiding, no more shame, no more body. 
you're, you're a pastor, right? I see the, the pastor's rod in your mouth. And that as you sing, you're going to feed, you're going to have prophetic song selection. And there's something going to shift in your song selection. What you feel right now is inside of you to grab a hold of. You can do this, buddy. You can do this. One more time. Do it one more time, Nicole. So come and blow on me. Everybody say prophetic song selection. One more time. This last 30 minutes would not have been possible without. Did you pick the song out? You got to have somebody that hears from God picking songs out. You can't get this kind of response with his eye is on the sparrow. His eye. It, you better shoot that sparrow. I'm looking for an eagle, y'all. Wrong song for the moment. Are you ready? Oh, we like that song, but not for this kind of move. Not for this kind of move. All right, just raise your arms and say, Holy Spirit, open my emotions to be able to worship you in spirit and in reality. Open up my soul to express you, to receive you, the way I was created to. Every, hold on a second, come here Rodrigo, I want you to come against some demons real quick, hurry up. I decided I wasn't gonna cast out no demons this weekend, it's too much work for me, I'm old now. No, you gotta get other people to do stuff, how many know that? Come on. We're going to cast out any demons that would stop the worship from flowing. Come on, buddy. He's my little friend from Chicago. He and his wife. Let's give him a big hand as he comes. Keep the flow going. Father, I just pray and command every demonic spirit that is attached to their emotions, their heart, their minds. I, I begin to pray and take authority over every spirit, God, that is cussing in here, that has a, even spirits of hatred and anger, God, that is, uh, uh, that is even inviting in the mind. I, I command you to go now in the name of Jesus. And I pray according to Isaiah 11 and 2, all that the spirit of the fear of the Lord, understanding, wisdom, counsel, the spirit of God will come in this room. I take authority over every spirit of anger I commend you to go now in the name of Jesus every spirit of rejection go now manifest it come out of their emotions come out of their heart I commend you to go I commend every demon that is hiding in their eyes I commend you to go every demon I commend you to come out and cry out come on begin to manifest and go now I commend you to go demons are hiding even in your abdomen of rejection of hurt, of disappointment, of tiredness, of hopelessness. I command you to go now. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over every spirit of fear, intimidation, lust, perversion. I command you to go now. In the name of Jesus, demons are hiding in the youth ministry. I command you to go. Demons against the children. I command you to go. Hatred, even lack of understanding. I command every demonic power of witchcraft, divination, I command you to go in the name of Jesus.
Come on, just play the keys. Come play the keys. Come on, something's happening as he plays the keys. If you pray in tongues, start praying in tongues. Sing with your, sing with your spirit right now. Come on. We're not ashamed of praying in tongues in this church. This is going to be an angel meeting. Angels are going to come and visit this service. So if you feel something on you, something touching you, something burning you, or you caught up in a trance, it's okay. Angels are coming. They love to be around worship. All right, tell your neighbor, get ready to open up your soul. Come on, get ready to open up your soul to supernatural worship. All right, you can be seated. Thank you, worship team. Stay on the ready. You're going to come back in a few minutes. Be open to writing a new song as I'm preaching. Okay, thanks. How many get saved that I felt the wind of God in the last 30 minutes? Dismiss kids, Jeff. What? Dismiss kids. Okay. Kids. You are dismissed. And disobedient adults, kids and disobedient adults, you are dismissed. <laughs> All right, kids, you can be dismissed. Thank you. My, my, my. Somebody say, prepare the way for what's going to come this next year. Have you got all my notes back there? Okay. Well, let's give the Lord a mighty hand of applause as we start. <laughs> Acts chapter 3, verse 19. This is what Peter preached on the day of Pentecost. He's preaching to the Jews because they had exchanged Jesus for Barabbas. That means the son of a man. He says, repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come to you from the presence of the Lord. Everybody say, times of refreshing from the presence of the Lord. That means whatever you, kind of trauma you've been through, trouble you've been through, self-hatred, anything, God sends his presence as a sign of refreshing. And we got so many people trying to bring refreshing to the intellect. It won't happen. It's just temporary. Tonight we're going to be talking about ministering to the king of kings. Help me understand that you are a priest. Say, I am a New Testament priest. Oh, that was low. Father, do you hear their unbelief? Say it out louder. One more time. Because of religion, we think priests wear costumes and they're in systems. And No, no, no. You're a New Testament priest. And you were designed as a priest to minister to the king of kings. That's your first ministry, is to minister to him. What's your first ministry? What's your first ministry? Now, tonight we're going to learn how to minister to the king of all kings. We're going to step into that. You have to excuse me, I got some kind of a stomach virus. <coughs> Not COVID. But I got a stomach virus five days ago, so I've only had two bowls of soup in five days. God put me on a force fast. I am convinced, after 50 years of being a Christian disciple, that many people have trouble because they've never, never gotten into deep worship. They have emotional issues, mental issues, physical issues, relationship issues, self-love issues, demonic oppression issues. 
because they've never correctly and consistently, somebody shout consistently, consistently. entered into praise and worship in the spirit with their whole heart, which is the first commandment. Matthew chapter 22, verse 36 down to verse 40. This is the first commandment, and you do it through worshiping to the king. Love that is not expressed is not love. Love that is not expressed is not love. Matthew 22, verse 36, teacher, what is the great commandment of the law? And Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And on these two commandments hang all the prophets. All the commands hang on these two commands. So God designed that out of our worship life, we are able to do everything else. And I have met so many Christians that are broke, busted, disgusted. They have money, but they're messed up in their head. They're going to all kind of therapy. They're trying to get somebody to fix them from the head, not the spirit. I'm not against therapy if it's spirit-led. Say, Kevin's not against therapy if it's spirit-led. You know, you just got to figure out who's going to be your doctor. Is Dr. Jesus involved in that deal? All right? The sick sheep in your flock are the ones that are not worshiping. Every pastor, when they watch the worship, they can see the condition of their sheep. If you got your head down, you're on your cell phone, your face is shining, you're a sick sheep. You're a sick sheep. Doesn't mean you're not going to go to heaven. But you cannot be a healthy sheep unless your soul is not wrapped up into worship. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 17. Now to the king eternal, immortal, invisible, to God who is alone wise, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by you they were exist and they were created. Everybody say, beholding, beholding. and becoming. Beholding and becoming. That's why God says, I don't want any false idols. I don't want you to worship anything but me. Why? Whatever you worship is what your soul becomes like. Whatever you worship is what your emotions and your minds hunger after and seek after. You see, God's image is transferred through praise and worship. God inhabits our praise. Somebody say, God inhabit or he lives in our praises psalm chapter 22 verse 3 says you are holy you are enthroned in the praises of israel then the bible says sing with understanding tonight we're going to talk about how to worship with understanding how to worship with understanding proverbs chapter i'm sorry psalm 47 7 for God is the king of all the earth, sing praises with understanding. God reigns over all the nations. God sits on his holy throne. So in other words, I need to have understanding of what's happening when I'm worshiping. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 15. What is the conclusion then? I will pray with the spirit. I will also pray with the understanding. I will sing with the spirit. I also will sing with the understanding. And what you have to understand that God makes our worship our warfare. I am convinced many people have needless demonic attacks because they just never worship. God designed your worship to be part of your warfare. Now, we're going to talk about seven Hebrew words for praise. These are in the Bible. I'm going to quote the scriptures. I'm not going to take that long, but when you understand these praises and you understand what these words mean, you are released in your soul and your emotions to do them. And you will thereby connect with the God who gave this instruction. The first word is halal. Everybody say halal. halal. Halal is a primary word for praise. Our word hallelujah comes from it, from this base word. It means to be clear, to shine, to boast, to show, to rave, to celebrate, to be clamorously foolish. It means to be such in a good mood, to worship God. It's almost like they think you're drunk. They think like, man, they're excited about this thing. Yeah, 
You connected to the God who saved your soul. You're going to live for eternity. Why wouldn't you want to be excited? Psalm chapter 113, verse 1 to 3. Praise or halal the Lord. Halal, O you servants of the Lord. Praise, halal the name of the Lord. Psalm 150, verse 1. Praise, that word is halal, praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise God in his mighty expanse. Let them praise God, halal in the name of the dance. Let them sing praises with the tambourine and the harp. It's the root word for hallelujah. That's what halal is. So let's take it for a test drive. When I count to three, I want you to scream the word halal. I want you to scream the word hallelujah five times. Will you do that? We're going to blow some of these old dusty souls out. Or is that okay? All right. Here we go. One, two, three. One more time. Something getting blown out. Let's do it five more times. Come on. One more time. Five more times. One, two, three. The next Hebrew word, because once you start saying it, you want to do it if God touches it, is called yada. It means to extend the hand or to throw the hand out like this. And to worship with your hand extended, giving yourself worship and adoration to lift your hand to the Lord. It means I have absolute surrender to the Lord. I'm going to give God my everything. When you raise your hands and you have a yada praise, you're really saying, God, you can have everything in my life. You can have everything in my life. It's got the thing of absolute surrender. So, I want you to raise your hands and say, I yada the Lord. I yada the Lord. One more time. I yada the Lord. One more time. I yada the Lord. Louder. I yada the Lord. One more time. I yada the Lord. So when God sees it, he says, oh, they want me to take care of them. They want me to be their father. That's what yada means. The next word is called toda. It's the same principle as the root word yada, but it's more specific. Toda means an extension of the hand in adoration to make a vow, acceptance and adoration, or agreeing what has been done or what will be done. So when you say toda, it means if I had a promise from God that hasn't happened yet, I say, God, it hasn't happened yet, but I toda you. I trust that it's going to happen. Somebody say, I toda you. I toda you. Louder, one more time. Scream it out loud. I you. Toda means you're thanking the creator for something you don't have in a natural, but you're trusting that he can create it. You're saying, okay, God, in this worship time, I toda you. I know something's going to happen. I'm thanking God to do this thing, all right? The next word is called shabak. Somebody say shabak. shabak. Come on, say, I shabak the Lord. It means to shout a war cry to the Lord. I shabak you, Lord. I address you, and I shabak you. That's what it says. Shout to the Lord a shabak of triumph, where you just shout out loud. Now, you think that this stuff is meaningless, but to the God we're worshiping, he sees it as a big deal, that I'm not ashamed. Psalm chapter 47, verse 1, clap your hands, all you people. Shout or shabak. The Lord God with a voice of triumph. If they were getting ready to go into battle, they would shout. They wouldn't say Shabbat. They would just be a loud shout. Okay? Can we do that? Let's do a loud. How many know you got some battles this year? Let's Shabbat the Lord right now. Just go crazy with making noise. Lord, I Shabbat you. I make noise. You follow. I believe in you. Whatever you want to say. Do you ready for it? Make it last 30 seconds. One, two, three. Shabak! 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 Shabak the Lord! How many can feel something in the room? God inhabits his responses. 
You don't choose the kind of response you want to have. You respond the way that God has defined it. The next one is Barak. Everybody say Barak. B-A-R-A-K. You know what it means? It means to kneel down when you worship. And there's some people that don't like when Nicole kneels down while she's singing worship. They say, well, why, does she got, why can't she just stand up? Hold on a second. She's got the Barak inside of her. She's kneeling before the Lord of everything. And so if you feel like in worship, you want to get out of your seat and just kneel and just lay on your face, that is totally biblical. Now, it's not biblical for religious people, but for children of God, oh, yeah. It means to give reverence to God as adoration. Blessing the Lord is your highest virtue. I acknowledge you that you're my king. He said, let us come before the Lord and barack him. Let's just bow before him. This is what God is saying. He said, I will barack the Lord at all times. You know, sometimes I want to kneel before the Lord. I, I just don't feel I'm worthy enough. I got to get before the Lord and kneel before the Lord. Number six, everybody say Zamar. Shout Zamar. Now, you guys ought to be so excited with this one. The word zamar means to pluck the strings of an instrument. So when J.D. is playing the keyboard, that's a zamar. And God will anoint that zamar. Well, he can play. All of a sudden, you'll feel the spirit of God come in the room. And he'll just be playing. Say, why do I feel? Because he's a zamar keyboard player. It means to sing with the instruments. It means to touch the strings. It means that God will land on those strings, and he will just fall on those strings. The instruments can be anointed. The instruments, drums, can be anointed. Guitars, keyboards, horns, all these things could be zamar. And the last one is called tehillah. Tehillah comes from the word halal, which means to sing a new song to the Lord. It means you may start with an old song, but you start adding words to it. So what it means is that you start singing a song, but all of a sudden the Spirit of God blows on it. And you start having different applications. You get new words. You may get new melodies, new rhythms. That's what it's called Tehillah. It's a spontaneous new song from what God put in your heart. And so when he does that and you sing that, God <laughs> comes on your Tehillah. And you can Tehillah anytime. When you start singing those songs and you start having another advent or another addition to those songs, that's Tehillah. And don't think that something is strange when they start doing this. This is exactly what God wants to happen. So he says, I'm going to do something supernatural with every single one of you tonight. And we're going to go through them one more time. Are you ready? Just give me one second. The first one is halal. It means to shout hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can't hear you. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. That means I'm boasting in my God, what God has done and what God will do. The next one is yada. Somebody shout yada. yada. That means I extend the hand and promise that God, even though it hasn't happened yet, I'm believing that you're going to move on my behalf. Come on, say toda. toda. It's agreeing what God has done and what God will do in the future. The next one is Shabbat. It means make a war cry kind of a sound. And there'll be certain times in the service that God says, do a war cry. That's what they did with Jericho. They were shabbat the Lord and the walls came down. Well, Kevin, that doesn't make any sense to me. That's not because you don't have God's miracles. Because you want everything to make sense. Let's try that Shabbat thing one more time. Think of something that you want God to do in the next three months. Something that he said he could do or that you need him to do. And now I want you to shabak the, the Lord with a war cry. Can you do that? 
One, two, three. <laughs> Hallelujah. And all these words are going to manifest in the next hour. Because as they're singing, the presence of God is going to come on you. And I want you to have this openness that you can let it happen. That you can say, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm down with that. I want that to happen. What does the mar mean? To pluck the strings. There's going to come another moment where JD's going to start playing the keyboard. And there's going to be people that can't stand up. They're going to start weeping and crying. Well, he just playing. No, 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 no. That's a zamar. God is on that thing. God's inhabiting the strings. He's inhabiting his fingers. And the last one is Jehila. It means I'm going to shout to God, and it involves singing in a hymn that you can add and make a prophetic song on those words. Somebody say Tehillah. Say, I need a Tehillah song. And you'll start singing what God wants to do, and God needs your voice to sing that song. And as he's singing that song, oh, my God. So I want you to raise your hands as the worship team comes back up. <coughs> now we're going to minister to the king. How do you minister to the king? You tell the king he's worthy. You tell the king he's magnificent. You tell the king he is your very life. You start admiring the king, worshiping the king. That's what he wants. And remember, as you worship the king, something becomes whole in you. Something becomes whole in you. Now, Father, direct the worship. Direct Nicole. Direct JD. Direct Jason. Ha-ha, <laughs> there it is. There's the Lamar right there. Woo! Come on, J.D. soul to worship. Come on. Zamar the Lord. Father, fall upon this keyboard right now.
us enter into that yada. The extended hands, lift your hands, yada. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. Hallelujah.
allow you. We 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 allow you. All the praise Yeah, 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 yeah. You are worthy to receive all the power and the glory. You created all things. Hallelujah, say. Say, 
Worship starts with revelation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Worship starts with revelation. We are hungry for the more and the more. Worship starts with revelation. Understanding, understanding. Worship starts with revelation. We are hungry for the more. Worship starts with revelation. Give us eyes and wings tonight. Worship starts with revelation. We are hungry for the more, the more. Worship starts with revelation. Understanding, understanding. We are hungry for the more. Worship starts with revelation, understanding. Worship starts with revelation. We are hungry for the more. Worship starts with revelation.
to give you reverence and adoration. Whatever that looks like for you right now, if you want to bow, if you want to lift your hands, <laughs> let's step into that Barak. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll just sing something simple, just sing. And I will bow down to give you reverence, to give you reverence and adoration. Sing with me, sing. I will bow down to adoration, to give you reverence and adoration. I will bow down to give you reverence and adoration, to give you reverence and adoration. To give you reverence and adoration, 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 to give you reverence and adoration. Not many people will sing this, but I think this church will. <laughs> to bear your neck means to bow before a king and say, you can take my head, but I'll serve you whether you let me live or die. Whether I live or die, I will serve you. You're the king of kings. Come on. Whether I live or die, I'll serve you. You're the king of kings. Whether I live or die, I will serve you. You're the King of Kings. Whether I live or die, I will serve you. You're the King of Kings. Come on. Whether I live or die, I'll serve you. You're the King of Kings. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whether I live or die, I will serve you. You're the King. For the King of Kings, I will bear my neck in my suffering. I will bear my neck before the King of Kings. I will bear my neck in my suffering. without reading this passage Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1 I 
was thinking about of all the death this year. I'll be at a funeral tomorrow. Of all the death. This thing's been around long enough now to where we all know someone who's died just about. Isaiah 6 1, in the year that King Uzziah died. So, mm, let's think about that. In the year that so many have died, this pestilence that's been loosed on the earth. We were, we were warned it was coming in these last days there'd be pestilences. This is a pestilence. This is a plague. The sad thing is it's self-inflicted. It was created by man from what we understand. Loosed on the world. Whether it was by accident or on purpose, who will never really know, but it's here. It's wrecked our world for the last nine months. But we see something different. Because on the, Isaiah said, yeah, the king died, but I saw the Lord. Come on. I saw the Lord. And I didn't see the Lord running and hiding. I didn't see the Lord sad. I saw the Lord high and lifted up. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the glory of his train, the train of his robe, filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim. Just close your eyes for a minute. See, God gave us this beautiful gift called an imagination. And the devil uses it to paint his portraits. But God didn't give you an imagination to only imagine evil. It's how we see in the spirit. I can see in the spirit at all times through the gift of my imagination. God can paint pictures of the other dimension, the realm of the spirit, the unseen realm. He can paint those pictures. So just close your eyes for a moment and I want you to see what I read. You've been given the gift to see it. So above the throne were these seraphim beings. Not just angels because they're called seraphim. Each had six wings. With two, he covered his face. With two, he covered his feet. And with the other two, he flew. Wonders are in the throne of God, the throne room. What kind of wonders? You know, you read the book of Revelation. There ain't a sci-fi movie out there that can compare with the images. You know, the best CGI guys in the world cannot duplicate the wonders that are in the unseen realm. And the prophet Isaiah, he says, I saw these beings, six wings. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Now I want you to close your eyes again. I want you to see one being flying above the throne, two wings over his feet, two wings over his head, and you can't see his face, but you hear what he's saying to the other seraphim. I'm guessing they glance at the Lord, and they look, and they say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. There's another reference to these beings in the book of Revelation. And it says, there's these other guys, and they're called the elders. And they have thrones around the throne. 
And these guys have been given crowns of glory. And it says that they stand before the throne day and night forever and ever saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Now, when I was a carnal man, I couldn't worship God very long. The more I see Him, the longer I worship Him. And worship is now the highlight of my life. At 61, the highlight of my life is our worship services. Number two is when I get to preach. Because there's no greater time in life that I experience He who is holy. Where He gets to share Himself with me. Because when I worship... You can be the smallest person in the room, but the God of heaven and earth comes on you when you truly worship. The God of heaven and earth moves on you. It says he inhabits. That means he dwells in. He lives in. He builds his home in. Praise. You know, I've said many times about you millennials, you've forgotten how to praise. You, you're good at worship, but you've forgotten how to praise. Praise wins battles. Worship's what you do when the battle's over, but praise takes the head off your enemy. Praise knocks down the gates, and then you worship when it's over. And it says... The whole earth is, the posts of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried out. And the house was filled with smoke. We make our own here. People say, why do you make smoke? Because I'm like God, I like clouds. Did you ever look in his sky? He makes them. People say, we need supernatural smoke. Well, I'll take that too. But until that comes, we'll make our own. Do you think the smoke that doesn't appear isn't made by him? Well, we, he, we're, we're creative like him, so we can make smoke too. Now, I've seen it without the fog machines. Or the mist mach hazers, we call them. But I like it. Why? Because we get to see the ambience of light. You can't really see what light's doing until you put the haze in. And then you can see the beams. And it just adds a dimension of glory. There's nothing wrong with us doing everything we can to make glory for God. Then it goes on to say, they were shaken by the voice of him who cried out. The house was filled with smoke. And I said, now this is when you really know you're starting to move into his presence. Woe is me. I'm undone. I'm undone. Have you ever been undone in the presence of the Lord? If you haven't, cry out for it. Being undone is where you lose all of yourself. It's where <laughs> you're literally a pile of flesh in his presence. And nothing else matters. I'm undone. Because I'm a man of unclean lips. Boy, I tell you, conviction comes in the house when true worship is happening. All of a sudden, everything that's in you that is wrong begins to say, I'm unclean. And that's when you begin to say, but God says, remember what he did to the prophet when he came in? He says, take that unclean garment off of him and put a clean. Remember Joshua, the high priest, when he came before the throne and he was in dirty rags. And the, the, the Lord said, now, take that off of him. Well, there's another process to that, too. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. You hear the cursing every day. 
I, I don't like Christians to cuss. Why? Because the Bible says stop it. Well, I think I've got the liberty to cuss. You're reading the wrong Bible, Dodo. Get the unclean talk out of your mouth. You're a holy people. You're a holy people. Act like it. Amen? He goes on to say this. My eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then one seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken with the tongs of the altar. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away. See, this is the exchange of worship. See, we've been made pure by Christ, but we get defiled in daily living. Come on. How many of y'all have a love for what's killing you? Come on. You get a love for what's killing you. It's called the flesh. It's called that nature. It's called that nature that lives inside of us. And the scripture says very clearly, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. And Paul said it really well in Romans 7 when he said, man, the thing I don't want to do, I do. And the thing I want to do, I don't do. Who will deliver me from the body of death? In worship, we take steps of deliverance. It's where we can be cleansed. If Isaiah the prophet, if Joshua the high priest, when they were before the throne, were cleansed, then I believe there's a cleansing reign in worship that helps us walk in a purification of heart and a spirit of repentance and humility. And we always say there's a greater one than me in the room. He gets the worship. We have that love affair with what's killing us. Oh, I know he's not good for me, but I love him. Oh, I know she's not good for me, but I love her. Oh, I know that it's not good for me, but I can't stop. Come on. Am I talking to the right people tonight? And that's why when we come together and we assemble in times like this and we ask God for the coal, we ask God humbly, Father, cleanse us of all filthiness of flesh and spirit and create in us a new heart. Lord, tonight we need washed from the despair of the last nine months. The loneliness of the last nine months. The hopelessness that many have come face to face with in the last nine months. This COVID crisis. Lord, we've got people with COVID minds now. And COVID hearts. We've got people who are bound in fear. And we've got people who've lost their way. Tonight I'm praying that we're in the midst of a crisis. But that crisis cannot dictate our hearts. He said, Behold, this has touched your lips, and your iniquity is taken away, and your sin is purged. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Who shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here I am. Send me. Here I am. Can you say that? 
in his presence tonight. His cleansing power is here. His righteousness is here. My eyes have seen the King. Ooh, it's a beautiful exchange. My, 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 my. In time and death. For my eyes have seen the King It's a beautiful exchange I'm undone And I'm undone For my eyes have seen the key huh. in my eyes have seen the pearl have you seen the pearl in diamond My eyes have seen the pearl And it's a beautiful exchange And now my life is rearranged And I will never be the same Because now you are my aim. Oh, in time and death. In time and death. For my eyes have seen the key. And my eyes have seen the pearl And it's a beautiful exchange You see my life was so deranged Then your glory came <laughs> And I will never be the same And now I'm under And I'm under For my eyes have seen the King My eyes have seen the pearl in my eyes have seen the pearl Listen and now I'm undone And I'm undone And I'm undone For my eyes have seen the King We prophesy the sovereignty. And it's a beautiful exchange. You see, my life was so deranged. And then your glory, it came. And I will never be the same. No, I won't die. And I won't die. 
For my eyes have seen the King And my eyes have seen the power Hallelujah. I want Brian to come and share a revelation about worship. When King David would play his harp and sing to Saul, who was oppressed by spirits, in the worship, in that prophetic mantle, the demons that oppressed him would leave. That's why so many people love worship, because in that mantle, the demons leave, but when you go, go out the door, they're sitting in your car waiting on you. Many of you have addictions, whether it's drugs, alcohol, whether it's pornography, no matter what it is. I believe I heard the Spirit of the Lord say that in this weekend of prophetic singing and the prophetic psalmist mantle gift coming forth, that those demons are going to be driven away that hold you captive because you've tried so many times, it's like you've never been able to get free. So you've just given up trying to get free and you just try to put the new man on top of the old man. But there's an anointing here to drive that away. See, Saul loved the worship because it made him feel better, but he rejected the word of the prophet. When the demon is driven away, you've got to accept the word that's preached this weekend and every week, and it's going to circumcise you. It's going to cut you. It's not going to feel good, but that's what it takes being brought to your knees. You can be just as religious as you think you are. You can have studied all you want to study, but my doctorate degree, the studies I continue to do, they do me no good when his spirit enters a room and I'm measured by myself to see how small I am before him. I struggled so many years with hit stuff. You have to willingly tell him to take your junk. <laughs> and I believe that heaven has decreed for this weekend that the stuff that's hold you bondage, I don't care if it's generational, I don't care what it is, there's no demon that is stronger than heaven's decree. So I want to ask you right now to lift up your hands. If you wonder, why do we sing this over and over again? Why do we do this? Because God has made this like, the, like they were saying earlier, your worship part of your warfare. Demons have been driven away that have brought suicide to your thoughts. I, I just heard that. That have confused your mind and brought insanity and brought failure. I'm getting ready to go to Pakistan and all of a sudden this fear and, and indecision came upon me. And all of a sudden I was reminded in worship that Paul and these guys, they didn't even think about that. The last time I was in Pakistan, a guy told me how he was beat up so many times for witnessing. And I said, wow, that's crazy. He said, no, that's just part of the package. Tonight. And these next nights, I really believe there's a mantle to set you free. Your hands in the air, please. There's a sign of surrender. If you don't allow yourself to be instructed, you'll find yourself being lost. Pray this prayer and believe right now that you're talking to God and believe that that thing that has held you in bondage has been pushed aside right now by the angels of heaven that are in this room right now. Tap into the Holy Ghost and mix your prayer with faith because without mixing with faith, your prayer will be no good. Say, Father, I make a decision to forgive every person that's ever hurt me. I forgive myself for always making excuses. I'm not going to hide my junk anymore. I'm going to quit being mean and nasty trying to defend and protect myself. I want to be holy. I yield to your Holy Spirit. Forgive me of my sins and deliver me from my madness, from my hurt, from my pain. Just begin to cry out to the Lord if you would only keep or just take it up and begin to worship to him.
kick it in gear and drive that stuff away, my friend. Come on, cry out. In Zaymanton, for my eyes have seen the King, and my eyes have seen the birth. And my eyes have seen the bow. Yeah, I'm undone. And now I'm undone. For my eyes have seen the king. And my eyes. You see, my life was so deranged. Now your glory, it is king. And I will never be the same. Because I become what I behold. And as the story it unfolds, oh, la 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 ba, so to la la. I want you to sing in the spirit. If you pray in the spirit, I want you to just take a minute and just begin to sing in the spirit. As Kevin pointed out in 1 Corinthians 14, 15. Now we have understanding. I will pray in the spirit and I will pray with the understanding. I will sing in the spirit. This is not a tongue to be interpreted for man. This is a worship unto God. This is letting your spirit flow. Oh, my. 
none to compare as I gaze upon him all despair leaves all things become possible when I come into his presence All things become possible when I see he who has no limits and he is for me. Come on. No, he's not against me. Come on. My God is on my side come on that's why i don't have to run and hide i stand in my authority i stand in his possibility come on all things are possible now ah. I can do anything oh, yeah. through Christ oh, who strengthens yeah. me. Oh, Come yeah. on. Oh yeah, let God It's around. time to lift up oh, your yeah. eyes. Oh yeah. oh yeah. It's time to look oh, on yeah. the prize. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, let God There's around. a high calling calling oh, yeah. you. Oh yeah. Do what you didn't think you oh, could yeah. do. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, let God Come on and look at oh, the king. Yeah. Oh yeah. Don't you know he's God over everything? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, let God And when we walk in his will. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Our enemy just has oh, to be yeah. still. He's the God of the breakthrough. He's the God of your breakthrough. He's ready to take off the head of the giant in your life. He's ready to deliver you from all fear and strife. He's the God of your breakthrough. He's the God of your go-through. Come on. And with him all things are possible. Yeah. So you need to see things more probable. Amen. You need to see yourself in his victory. Come on. You need to see yourself in his mystery because you're seeing things that angels long to see Whew. the devil didn't even know he was sealing his own defeat because when he attacks you he attacks him come on and you know he ain't gonna win that you know he ain't gonna win that because he's in our fight he's in our fight and he's the god of our victory he's the god of our victory Whew. we rise up 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 mm. 
we rise up, we rise up, rise up. We rise up, rise up, rise up. We rise up, rise up, rise up. Come on, there's something on that tonight. We rise up, rise up, rise up. Mm. We rise up, rise up, rise up. We rise up, rise up, rise up. Let's go to Zion. Rise up, rise up, rise up. Let us go to Zion. Rise up, rise up. Rise up, let us go to Zion. Rise up, rise go up, rise up, let us go to Zion. Rise up, rise up, rise up, let us go to Zion. Rise up, rise up, rise up, let us go to Zion. Rise up, rise up, rise up. When we walk in one accord, come on. That's when we cross over the threshold of possible. That's when he said, that's when the anointing will flow over the head, over the beard, over the body. That's where he said we move into this place that is pleasing to him when we walk in that one accord when we come together in worship isn't it amazing how opinions just begin to fall away hmm? why because we all agree at who he is we all agree at what he can do amen we all agree it isn't about me or you when we worship. You know, two words that Kevin didn't include tonight in that short teaching were shaka. Shaka. How many all know what that word means? Hebrew, shaka. Shaka. That's the word for lie on your face before him. In the Greek, it's proskuneo. It means to prostrate yourself. It means to lay at the feet of God like a dog would lay at his master's feet. You see, when we worship, we get low. Sometimes we start living a little too high. Come on. We start thinking a little too high of ourselves. We start comparing ourselves among ourselves, and the Scripture says that's dumb. Well, the Scripture says it's not wise. I say it's dumb to compare ourselves among ourselves. Well, can, can he do this better than me? Can she do this better than me? Does she have this and I don't? That Bible says that's not wise. Get low. Get low. I'll never forget, I was in a meeting with Rodney Howard Brown many years ago, back in the 90s. And, and I'll never forget, he had just come back from South Africa. And, and he said, I took my son on a safari. And he said, we'd been out in the bush all day. And he said, man, we were parched. And they'd run out of water in their canteens. And he said, the guide said, I know where there's a spring. And so he said... When the guy took him, he said there was a, just a piece of black water line sticking out of the ground. And there was just a trickle coming out of it. It was connected into an underground stream. So Rodney said, I walked over and I picked up the pipe to my mouth and it stopped. It stopped. There wasn't enough pressure, you know. If you've ever drinking out of a spring, I have like that. There wasn't enough water pressure to force that water up. And he said, I'd drop it down and it'd start to run. 
And he said, finally, I got down on my knees. And he said, still, picking, even on my knees, picking that pipe up to my mouth, the water would stop flowing. And he said, finally, I just laid down. And I got my mouth on the same level as that pipe. And the water poured into my mouth. And he said, as I was laying there in the bush, God spoke to me and said, son, you got to get low with me or the water will stop flowing. You got to get low. I've never forgotten that illustration. And when we worship and we bow down and we prostrate ourselves, we get low. We, we, we just say, it's all you. Look what the Lord has done. Salvation. Nothing else. I don't, I don't need anything else to praise you for. No, 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 no. I don't need anything else to praise you for. Forgive me, Lord, for not understanding that you've already given me the greatest gift. How could I be distracted by these other things? How could I be distracted by these other things? I just got to get low. I just got to come worship. Can we, can we do that song, Nicole? Do we, come let us worship and bow down. Why not move this into... We've had some high praise. We've had some declaration. Do you know that? Come let us worship. We have some song that tells us to worship and bow down. The one I'm thinking of you, we haven't done it in a while. We've done it. Do you know? I don't know. I've been doing this for 40 years, man. I don't know when I did it or where I did it. It would go like, come let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our God, our maker. No, that's not you. Well, it should be. <laughs> Think of a song. Thank you. She's better at this than I am. That's why she's the worship leader and I'm the preacher. Yeah. I'd be pulling something back from the 80s. Old man like me. Have you ever bowed in public, not ashamed?
giving it all, giving it all. Father, we get low before you. We get low. Lord, to think of how much of you we've never seen. As our flesh sometimes squirms in just a few minutes at worship. And how these elders that really see you forever and ever and ever say, Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty, what do you really look like? Whew. What do you really look like, Father? Lord, when we read these things about you, we long to see more of you. We long to see more of you. We long to experience deeper realms. We long to understand the mysteries. We long to understand the mystery. We know that we'll see you face to face. And now we see you through our gifts we see you through our imaginations we see you through your word and the beautiful pictures that it paints for us but father we we know that when we do see you just we would gladly join the elders who can do nothing else but to cast their crowns and say holy holy Holy, Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Lord, we open this meeting this weekend by this time of just glorifying you. If that's all we accomplished the whole weekend, it's more than enough. Just to glorify you. Father, we need to come more often to give to you instead of trying to get from you. We need to come more often concerned of how much you're worshipped instead of how much we're comforted. I keep hearing something in my heart, and I, I believe it's the Holy Ghost. I hear him saying, now, what can I do for you? And I, I hear the Lord saying, okay, the throne is open for petition right now. Your praise and your worship has opened a door in heaven. And his ear is open now. And he's saying, now what can I do for you? Just like when Jesus asked the people that came, he said, what would you want me to do for you now? I want my sight, Lord. Okay. Be healed. And I want you right now. Not, not lust of your flesh, not lust of your eyes, not pride of life stuff. But what do you want him to do? What can he do for you? What, what do you really need in your heart of hearts? For some it would be, Lord, I, I really need 
some clarity for my future. I need to know how to make some decisions for others. It would be, Lord, I need, I, I'm really hurting right now. I've got a broken heart. For others, it might be, Lord, I've, I've, I, I need provision. And for others, it may be, Lord, I need healing. Lord, I need healing in my physical body. I need healing. I need healing, Jesus. That's what you can do for me. Lord, I, I need to see more of you. <laughs> I need to know you in a deeper way. If you'll just, Lord, grant me more of the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you, that will trump anything else I could ever ask. And I pray you're making your petitions known before the Lord right now because there's an open door in heaven to hear. Praise and worship opens doors in heaven that may have been closed because from the place of humility the Lord can begin to exalt from the place of humility the Lord can begin to exalt Jesus Lucas, come up here, please. We've been blessed the last two and a half weeks to have uh, our grandson stay with us. And um, I... Uh, I've seen something in you this last couple weeks I hoped was there I wanted it to be there but I didn't know but I know now the call of God that's on your life I know now the call of God that's on your life. And I wish when I was 12, I would have known the call of God that was on my life. No one told me. No one confirmed me. No one confirmed me. No one could see it. I was around the spiritual blind people. But God's put a grace in you, son. God's put a call in you. And you're going to lead his people. <laughs> you're going to lead his people. And I see the spirit of wisdom in you. That's lived in your mother, your father. I see the spirit of grace in you. And tonight, I confirm. Not only as your grandfather, but as an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, once sent to build the church. I confirm the call. And when I ask you, Lucas, what do you want to be when you 
get older and you answered the pastor I thought well I hope so I hope so but now I know now I know now father I pray that you take of the spirit that is on me just as Paul laid his hands on young Timothy and he imparted those gifts I pray for an impartation of the gifts of God. Jesus. Jesus. I hear the Lord saying, Son, you're a Peter. Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Do you love me, Lucas? Do you love me more than these? Feed my lambs. Do you love me, Lucas? Do you love me more than these? Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. And lead them into green pastures and still waters. And Jesus, the shepherd, is going to begin to reveal himself inside your heart, Lucas. I remember when I was about six years old. I went to church one Sunday and I talked... I just heard a missionary speak at our service that Sunday. I didn't really, I was just a six-year-old kid. And he was talking about how Paul said, I wish that Israel could be saved. And he said, I myself would, re I, I would accept to be cursed if Israel could be saved. And my little six-year-old heart, I went home that night and I was saying my little bedtime prayers. And I remember this to this day. 55, 56 years ago. I said, Jesus, I'll go to hell if you'll save my friends. That was a dumb prayer. I didn't know it was God saying, you're a shepherd, David. You're a shepherd, David. I didn't know that. I just, I remember praying. I said, Lord, I will go to hell if you'll save my friends. I didn't know I was going to get to lead all kinds of friends to Jesus. Whew. Wow. Wow. My, my, my. Some I don't I don't want anybody to think, well, he's just doing that because it's his grandson because I don't do that, even for my grandson. If I did not know the call of God was on him, I would not be speaking these words. I don't care who he is, related to me or not. Amen. But the boy's got a grace. He's special.
like water for you to drink, like water from my heart. I'll pour my love on you. If praise is like perfume, I'll lavish my oil till every drop is gone. Well, I, I um, don't want to wear you out on the first night. <laughs> we got a weekend to go. And I want you to just pray this weekend about just a, a, and you guys have been so gracious with blessing our guests when they come, man. And, and I love the givers. Now, I want you to hear me on this. Romans 12 lists the gifts of what we call motivational gifts of ministry. The Bible says, you know, he that leads do it with diligence. He who serves, he who shows mercy. And it says, he who gives, he who gives with liberality. And I always say, I have the gift of giving. I do. And not everyone does. I know that. I understand that. Not everyone has the gift of giving. And people say, well, how do I know if I have the gift of giving? Well, here's the clue. You got something to give. And you can give more because God has increased you. And you got to remember some. The number one thing the Bible talks about is that blessing, and one of those definitions of blessing is to have all your needs met and then enough left over to give unto every good work. And these guys are some good works. Amen. I've, I've been running with Kevin for over 25 years now. And I'm telling you, you talk about a good work, the man's a good work. There ain't nobody does what Kevin does. Amen. One of the hardest working men I ever met in my life. The guy's relentless. Amen. He's relentless. Jason, this guy, he goes to Brazil. He's getting ready to go to Brazil for three weeks Monday. He ain't going to get no money in Brazil. They barely pay his plane ticket. He's preaching and leading. This guy's a rock star in Brazil. And you can go down there in Brazil and preach to a crowd of 10, 12,000 people. And they take an offering. It ain't even hardly enough to cover, cover your airline ticket. And then they don't even give it to you. <laughs> You're a missionary. <laughs> well, that's great if you were independently wealthy. But he's got a family in Georgia. He's got a family. He's got a wife and two wonderful children. They're not really children anymore. They're young adults. And they're, they're still living at home. He's, he's got them in school. He's got them. He's got to pay his bills just like we do. And so when he comes, we like to be a blessing in his life. Phew. Like to be a blessing. I like to labor with men that don't ask when they come, how big's your church and how much you going to give me? I've had them ask and I just say, never mind. I just want to do it. If, if they ask me, how big's your church? I say, never mind. Never mind. If they say, well, what's the honorarium going to be? Never mind. Because if, if you were my friend, you know I'm going to take care of you to the best of our ability. We're not going to, we're not going to stiff you. We're not going to stiff you like a bad waitress at a <laughs> restaurant, right? I remember my kids would come home. They, but all three of my girls worked their way through school and college working at the Golden Corral down here. And they'd come home, and, and any time their schedule said they had to work on Sunday, they'd say, oh, man, i got to work on Sunday. I said, well, don't you work on Sunday? It's a business day of the week. They said, Dad, Christians don't leave tips. They're the stingiest people. They demand everything, and they leave a track on the table that says Jesus loves you. And they, I remember Jamie would come home. She'd say, I had a 12-top stiff me, and they left me a track and didn't give me a tip, and her kids trashed the whole freaking room. I said, Jamie, walk in forgiveness. But they wanted to invite her to church. I remember, you know, one of the first things my pastor told me, he said, we went out to eat one day, and, and I, I saw the tip he left. It was almost as much as the bill. 
And he said, son, one day she may walk in my church and I may pass an offering plate in front of her. She'll never forget me. Amen. We had a bad waiter in Columbus. We eat the same restaurant every week. We had a bad waiter. I told George one day, I said, watch, watch me convert our waiter. And I think the bill was like $18, and I left him a $20 tip. Next time we came in, he made a beeline for our table. What can I do for you? I left him another tip. And I usually tip him at least half as much as the bill. And that guy, now when he walks in, he goes, the usual? We don't even have to order. Yes. Amen? Because you can kill them with kindness. The goodness of God sometimes lead them to repent of being a bad waiter. Amen? All right, the ushers will help you. If you need an offering envelope, if you want to give online, you can uh, give online tonight. We'll know everything that comes in tonight's going to our, our conference um, anyway, but you can, you can hit the tab for Kevin Leo or you can just give because everything coming in tonight, we know where it's going. But if you need an envelope or you want to write a check or give cash or if you want to give online with a credit card on, on the envelope, you can give with a credit card and uh, we'll take good care of our guests and we'll make sure that Jason's got enough for a round trip ticket. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> These guys would, they would go anywhere, man, for anything. I mean, they're just wonderful. They're wonderful. They don't, they don't come asking. They don't come asking. They just come giving. Amen. They just come giving. Hallelujah. And uh, we'll be back here in the morning at 10. And uh, we'll be back here tomorrow night at 6. Sunday morning at 10. Sunday night at 6. Four more powerful services. Keep praying for Kevin to get his full strength back. Amen. He's in the room back there just kind of chilling a little bit. And uh, we, we, we worked him hard last night in Columbus. <laughs> worked him hard tonight. But uh, he's, a, he's a warrior, man. He's a warrior. Hallelujah. Praise God forever. Amen. Well, we thank you for coming out tonight. If you're traveling, we thank you for coming. If you've come from afar, our Jackson Church, Zanesville, Columbus Rock, we love you guys. Thank you so much for coming down tonight. We pray you got a refreshing. We pray you got a blessing to take home to your people and uh, drive safe. We love you. Have an awesome. And here's what we want to ask you to do. Um, as quickly as you can, we'd like you to kind of go out of the sanctuary because we're going to sanitize. We're going to kill all the bugs in this whole room. We've got these professional uh, machines that are going to fog this whole room. And so if you can go out in the foyer or the hallways, just as soon as you can, that'll let our guys get this done so they're not here all night. And uh, it'll be all fresh and ready to go in the morning. Amen. We love you. Bless you. Thank you so much for coming.